This tutorial will cover configuring controls, including mapping access inputs and button inputs. To get started, just open the main options menu here, and then switch to the access configuration menu here. And this menu displays the access inputs. Each one of these bars is an indicator showing what signal is being received from the current selected device, which you can change with the drop down menu here. And to change a mapping, all you have to do is just click on one of these bar indicators and then select which control you want to map it to. I can first test the controller to make sure I'm receiving a signal on the access channel that I want to map a control to, then click on the indicator and map the control I want to it. And that's basically it. You can map other controls to other access channels, and you can also optionally click here to go through a step-by-step -step process to map each individual access control to a channel. But it's generally much easier to just click on an access indicator and then select which control you want to map to it. Now we'll also go over how to save a custom control profile. That can be done by clicking on the button here, and a pop-up menu will appear, and the name of the current device will be listed first, and you can use the backspace key to remove characters and then rename it to something that you want to call it. And then once you've done that, go ahead and press the enter key and the profile is saved. And then to reload the profile, you just use the button above it. Uh, first, what you want to do though is select the device that you want to load the custom control profile for, if you have more than one control device. And again, you do that with the drop down menu at the top. And then once you've selected the device, then click on the load custom profile and then select the profile from the menu. For each access input, you can also optionally invert each signal. And for throttle control, you can also optionally enable afterburner, set access, or full range control modes. The set access option lets you set the throttle level based on movement from the center of the access range, while full range lets you select both positive and negative throttle levels. Next, we'll go over how to map key and button inputs. First, click on the key button controls option here. That'll open the menu. And this menu displays a list of all available game controls that we can map keys and buttons to. And to map one, all you have to do is just click on the control that you want to map a button or a key to, and then press that key or button. So to demonstrate, I'll click on the afterburner flight control option here, and you'll see that its listing changes color to green, and there's also a little text here at the bottom indicating that it's waiting to receive an input from you. And then you can go ahead and click a button or press a key, and that will map it to the control function. Anytime you press a button on a game control device that has a control function mapped to it, you'll see a green box appear next to its listing. And you can also optionally map multiple buttons or controls. Um, all you have to do is press and hold the first button that you want to use to activate it, and then press and release the second button. And I'll go ahead and set this control back to its original button. There are three pages of control options, selectable with the page buttons here at the bottom. And you can also optionally map access inputs for button controls as well. And that's all for this tutorial. Refer to the instructions included with the game or online for more information.